Good morning, Midland, Texas. Buddy Webb, I uh, got a story for you today. I seen on the news where there is a missing person, missing woman in Tyler, Texas, Rosemary Rodriguez. Uh, I'm going to show you her picture there. Family desperate to find East Texas woman. I found that interesting because one of the main players is here in Midland on the uh, uh, Capital Murder Tenth of My Life is Rose is Rosemary Rodriguez. Okay, also known as Rosie or Rosa Rodriguez, and and so. Uh, because of that, I don't think this is the same person, but I just started laying out some of the evidence I found, and I want to show you, it is just overwhelmingly amazing. You're truly going to be amazed. And so what I did here is, is basically paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, this happened, this happened, this happened, and I'm not going to read that to you like that, but it, there it is. And and what I did below it on the comments is I took each paragraph and I backed it up with evidence. I took you know I did I here here's this uh, um, police report and this log file. Here's the security camera picture, and it back, back backs up what the statement that I made showing that I mean this is what happened. And so we're going to start at the top. This missing woman's name is Rosemary Rodriguez, which is the same name as one of the secret police, but I don't think it's the same person. Interestingly, MPD, Midland Police De Department, Detective Rosa Rodriguez was the only police officer recognized on camera in both the entries to my home, 11912 and 2112. It's clear that they never planned on the entry from 12912 to be known as they were staging the crime scene. And remember, they hid the police report from the night of the murder attempt from 129.12, and I didn't get a hold of it for seven years. I just got it a few months ago, actually. And and so uh, it looks like they never planned. They come in right after the murder attempt, after I survived, and they staged the crime scene. And then they come back a second time on February 1st, three days later, and that was going to be the only known entry. And, and nobody would have known that they had been in there and they had already staged the crime scene. And uh, and I believe that's uh, when when concrete was poured. And you know, one time, you know, I wondered why they wait three days. And and I think obvious they were waiting for the concrete to pour. They were covering up the trap hole. And it, so because obviously, you know, not all police officers are dirty. You know, I mean, we have many many good police officers that that that, that are not involved in capital murders, uh, for profit murders, and underground facilities, and and burglary of homes all over Midland, Texas. And we got a lot of good cops. And you know, but these dirty cops. They don't want the good cops to find out what they're doing, okay? You know, and that's obvious. So here, here's from my security camera. These are the secret police pictures, right? And because they were secret for uh, up until 2018, I had to pay a private investigator to get them identified. And uh, and you can see the timestamp on it, 129.12. Keep in mind, I was shot on 128.12 at about 10.30, 10.35, and so it was right before. So really, this is about four or five hours later. Uh, and and here is a picture of Rosa Rodriguez in my home. And she and note, also notice she has a camera in her hand there. Okay. And so there's some pictures that might or might not still be available and that would be evidence that I consider. And this one is on February 1st, three days later. Here she is, uh, dressed up, different detail. And, you know, she's a detective. she got gloves on. You know, notice she doesn't have gloves on there. You know, it's, it's pretending that she hadn't been in my home three days earlier, you know. And the guy that she said standing there with, it was them two that had come to the hospital that morning and asked me to sign a consent to search form, pretending they were going to my house for the first time. And, and I've got another uh, paragraph on that. And so... So that was the uh, the first one. Okay, the second one here. MBD Detective Rose Rodriguez was one of the main players in the crimes against me, and I've wondered if she was the shooter, a.k.a. would-be killer. She met me at the 7-Eleven right after I crawled out, but then lied on the police report and said that she wasn't there. The police report from this night, which was kept hidden from me for seven years, shows that Rosie wasn't at the 7-Eleven, but she had climbed in my truck and was giving me first aid there. Okay, <clears throat> and, and so... 
and and basically this come from the uh, informational report. Uh, the top one is April Chandler, uh, Officer April Chandler, and she's saying she's the one that got, uh, met me at the 7-Eleven, and she was inside my truck applying pressure to the wound. But that was a lie. I mean, I was there, right? Because I know, and of course, obviously my word's good. I'm the guy that paid, you know, saved up disability money and paid to get sicker police identified, you know? And, you know, every, everything, all my whole testimonies backed up. Even though the story's crazy, my word's solid. You know, these people are the liars right here and and uh and so chandler says she was at the 7-eleven and rose rodriguez in here she she has her lie saying it was chandler that that contacted her and she met her at the you know from the hospital all this and but that was a lie uh it was rosie rodriguez that met me at the 7-eleven minutes after i shot and 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 that's all there is to it and uh and but later when i did get the police report I found evidence showing by the timestamps that April Chandler proven that Officer April Chandler lied because she said she, uh, on emergency detention from the hospital, she was there at 11.03, but according to the police report, she didn't even leave the 7-Eleven till 11.07 and didn't even get to the police, to the hospital till 11.15, and that showed she was lying, and that's what I said all along, and they're both lying. Uh, both Rosa Rodriguez and April Chandler lied about this premeditated capital attempted murder multiple times okay and and so there uh there was that paragraph next come to find out rosa rodriguez was lifelong friends with the ex-wife as they went to elementary and junior high together i found out uh two years later during the protective order hearing when both of them testified that they believed i was delusional which was the fulfillment of an extortion threat threat from the ex-wife okay I had filed divorce five days before I shot from this ex-wife of three months, okay? And, and you know, all this time, I didn't know that, that Rosa Rodriguez and April Chandler were lifelong friends, okay? They had gone to junior high and elementary together. I got another uh, transcript. And basically what happens is that protective order gets filed on me uh, two years after I'm shot by the ex-wife who is alleged to be involved in the shooting, okay? And, and then, uh, uh, and I hadn't seen her talk to her in a year and a half. And then when we get to court, we my, my attorney notices that she's sitting next to Rosie Rodriguez before court. And so just on a whim, my, my attorney asked, asked him under testimony, you know, under uh, sworn testimony, do y'all know each other? And to our surprise, they were lifelong friends. You know, they'd gone to elementary and junior high together. I didn't know that all the time I was married. You know, the person that met me at the 7-Eleven after I'm ambushed and shot five days after I filed for you know, was a lifelong friend of the ex-wife. And, and, and she was going to get, you know, this paid for house and all that. Anyway, here, this was about the recorded, this is a transcript off a recorded phone, uh, recorded conversation, me and the ex-wife. And what she's doing here, as, as I'm talking, I said, and then I'm saying, you're going to pay me a thousand or eighteen hundred to twelve hundred dollars a month, or I'm going to tell everybody that, that what I've seen or everything that I've seen and tell everybody you're crazy. And I'm reminding her of what she said to me. And she said, I made a mistake. This was the ex wife. She was admitting to trying to extort eighteen hundred dollars a month from me over the crimes at this house. I made a mistake. She later blames Greg. Greg told her to do it. Okay. And so basically if if I didn't pay the pay the money for life $1800 a month she's going to tell me I'm crazy. So here 2 years after I'm shot her and her lifelong friend Detective Rodriguez go to court and they testify that I'm delusional. They call me crazy. They uh, the the uh extortion threat was fulfilled and here's the proof of it right here i mean this is a recording you can go to my youtube channel follow the money is that recording right there and and you can hear this conversation and then this is the court transcript where both rosa rodriguez and her lifelong friend call me delusional in court okay Next bullet point, three days after the murder attempt, Rosa comes to the hospital with another high-ranking MPD officer and asked me to sign a consent search form as she was pretending they were going to my home for the first time to start the investigation. I didn't know they had already been in my home. She didn't know they had been accidentally caught on camera. The log files show they tried to disable the camera. This consent to search form wasn't submitted to evidence until five months later, and it looks like she was never going to do that, but then learned that they had been caught on my bedroom security camera. Okay, so here, three days 
days after the murder attempt, Rosie Rodriguez and that, that other detective you seen the picture of a minute ago comes to the hospital and they with the consent to search for him, okay? And they're pretending that they're going to go to my house and start the investigation. Well, I'm sitting there wondering, why did y'all wait three days? And I'm not expecting that the cops are dirty. You know, it's February 1st, you know, and here, I'd, I'd crawled out to survive this murder attempt, you know, and... Um, and, but, you know, now I'm thinking, well, why'd they wait three days? Because they were letting the concrete pour is what they were doing. Nobody was ever supposed to know they were there that first time, but the security camera had accidentally caught them. And so here, uh, what we see here is the evidence logs and, uh, and, and what is interesting is that same consent to search form wasn't submitted for evidence until June 25th, 2012. Okay, and so that's February 1st, 2012. She kept that in her personal possession all that time, and I'm sure she was never going to submit that form that, uh, except that she found out that they had been caught on camera. They had tried to disable the camera but accidentally started it and got caught. Also submitted was CD photos. I bet this was from her uh, camera that she was holding, which is probably evidence. I would love to see them. My statement, she didn't submit until five months later. And, you know, and I bet that's very interesting, too. I wonder what that says. And then the two drawings that I'd given her. Because I gave her two drawings of where, where I think maybe people's breaking my home. And she's pretending, oh, yeah, we'll go look, you know. And she's got this old pretending that she's pretending that she's a good cop and she's a dirty cop. And that's what happened, you know. I mean, I would have no idea that she was involved in the murder attempt on my life. Here, I'm thinking she's trying to help me. Can you believe? imagine that okay and this is all related here on this second entry to my home on 2112 my security camera which is still working happens to get a picture of rosa rodriguez pointing to the security monitor it looks like she's pointing out the tunnel locations used to some of the other people in the room okay so here she is rosa rodriguez and you can look at the time that's 2112 the second entry to my home and she's pointing up there on the top left and what this would show outside my house was this camera that was showing over here and and so there was a uh a uh, suspected tunnel entrance right here <coughs> on the two side by side manholes, and another one here that was in the backyard of this next door neighbor's home right here. And and you're gonna see that comes up. And I have a I have a a video called Tunnel Entrances. You know you gotta look it up, and uh, and that's pretty amazing. Okay, next next uh, paragraph bullet point. Rosa Rodriguez is also the one that made up the tripwire lie, and she perjured herself in court telling it. She said she found a tripwire tied in my shotgun, but no, no tripwire is in evidence. No pictures of a tripwire exist, and CSI Marty Barrett that picked up my shotgun doesn't mention a tripwire, nor do any of the other 11 police that were at my home. Keep in mind that most of them were not identified for six years, and not even all of them are on the police report. Lastly, triple proof shows I wasn't shot with my gun. Okay, so this is just outright blatant felony aggravated perjury, right? And remember, I got a lifetime protective order because of this detective that's involved in the capital attempt of my murder of my life, you know. Uh, and, and here was her lie. There was a tripwire that went across from the wall, from the south wall to the north wall, and was connected shotgun. Well, remember, I wasn't shot with my shotgun. Triple Brooks shows that. Besides that, no tripwire in evidence, no pictures of a tripwire, and none of the other 11 secret police said anything about a tripwire. Rosa Rodriguez made that lie up, and I guarantee you there's been criminals out there repeated that lie over and over and over again. At the ER, at the ER, the emergency room, after I was shot, Rosa started, start was starting and stopping a voice recorder while repeatedly saying, yeah, but it was an accident, right? It was an accident, right? It was an accident, right? And I finally said in front frustration and in shock, I was in, it was an accident, but it wasn't my accident. And she's starting and stopping the recorder. I was very clear that I was shot during a home invasion. And I thought that burglars had accidentally knocked off my gun and it shot me. But now I know that I wasn't shot with my gun. And it was no accident. The ER nurse documented Rosie as saying that she was going to give my brother my gold necklace and other belongings before he would have had time to arrive from Ops, but she didn't do that. When I asked him for them back, he didn't know what I was talking about. This is off in the nurse's notes, and that was the proof of what I'm showing here. As as the nurses documented, I, I'm, I'm crawling out at 10.42, 11.27, you know, less than an hour later, the nurse is documenting me saying there are sirens going off, you know. In closet, there's a voice recorder recording what's happening. The alarms kept going. 
going off. This is what I'm telling the police. I'm telling the emergency room. I'm talking on a voice recorder in case something happens to me and saying what they're doing. I have proof. Just go look. There's proof. And you know, it's like, here, there's proof. I mean, I'm under a home invasion. I was shot during home invasion with burglar alarms going off. And then, and we document Rosa Rodriguez is in the room, right? Has patient Snackless going to give it to his brother. Look at the timestamps. You know, so Rosa Rodriguez knows all this. Rosa Rodriguez in her um, narrative, in, in her report on the police report says, but he said he was locking up for the night, and knocked his gun over and shot himself. That's what she wrote. And here's what Buddy said. Buddy said, I was under a home invasion. There's sirens going off. Alarms are going off. I mean, these people literally broke in my house, hunted me like an animal and shot me and left me to die. That's what happened. This was cold-blooded murder, folks. Cold-blooded and these dirty cops are involved in it. That don't mean all cops are dirty. These cops are dirty. This was a premeditated, for-profit, capital attempted murder. And if Rosie would have ruled my murder an accident, that her childhood friend was going to get a paid-for and very special home, plus $650,000 in cash and stocks. Most of this was from an accidental death policy that I paid for, which was seen in the life insurance books that had been taken from my home in the weeks before this murder attempt. Okay. And so I got a bullet point on this. My life insurance books, okay? And basically, the accidental death, if Rosie Rodriguez rules my murder an accident, then uh, then I have a basic accidental death and a supplemental accidental death that adds two years pay. That's about $200,000. And then uh, and then a $250,000 on top of that. So there's all together about a half million dollars. If Rosie Rodriguez rules my murder an accident that her friend is going to get, okay? Okay, so let's keep that in mind. And then under court testimony, this is a transcript. My my attorney asked her, do you know her? And says, I've known her. We went to school and elementary and junior high together. The, <clears throat> and, and so that's when we found out the link between the primary beneficiary and Rosie Rodriguez, okay? And so some people have asked, how come they didn't shoot you twice? Well, if they shot me twice, they couldn't call it a basic accidental death. There was a half a million reasons why they didn't shoot me twice, okay? Next bullet point. I happened to hear MPD Detective Rosa Rodriguez talking to then Chief of Police Price Robinson, and I believe the conversation was uh, about the murder attempt on my life. Chief Robinson said, what I don't know won't hurt me. I have I recorded this off my police scanner. You're fixing to hear uh, secret police Rosie Rodriguez. Let me replay that here. 14, there will be no because one I don't know will hurt me. Now, what the chief of police don't know won't hurt him. That's what he says. You know, and then he retired. Now we have Chief Police Herman. Chief Police Herman has me blocked from communicating with him. You know, I've got emails on that, you know. I mean, we changed Chief of Police. We didn't change the corruption. And, the, and look at all this evidence, you know. That's what the Chief of Police is hiding from. That's why he blocked me, right? Because then he'd have to follow the law, right? And, and you know, and, and actually most of this I've already showed him. I have the emails. I can, I, you know, I can post... Not at this time, but but I have proof of what uh, the current chief of police knows, plus the emails to the last chief of police. Next bullet. I also noticed that she made mention in the police reports, my, my leg was not amputated on 2 one I believe she was wanting that to happen because she knew that I had been shot myself, that I hadn't shot myself, and my leg proved this was a capital attempted murder that she was involved in, okay? And so this is uh, from the from the information report from Rosie Rodriguez's uh, uh, own narrative, and she makes a point of saying, Buddy had surgery and his foot was not amputated. You can imagine her frustration and how upset and pissed off she is. She, you know, here she's looking at a life sentence for trying to murder this good citizen in his home, and they and the doctors didn't cut his leg off, and it's going to send her to prison the rest of her, her murdering life, huh? You know, I mean, that's what my guess is. 
Recently, a person said something about my foot being blown off, which was a lie that was made up and spread after I was shot. I showed where the ER doctor stated that, been, that I had a through-and-through -through gunshot wound that appears to look like it came from a shotgun blast. Evidence shows it didn't. But Rosa Rodriguez wrote that half my foot was blown off. This told me that she knew something about the x-rays being faked where the other guy was missing his heel bone. So this is from the medical reports, okay? <clears throat> the emergency room doctor who come to find out was my brother-in-law that I didn't know about, okay? And he says, right ankle exhibits a through and through gunshot wound. Well, that's the same thing I said. I had two holes in my foot when I got to the hospital, you know? And, and you know, that's really important because the x-ray showed the back of the, the heel bone gone. And they took the x-ray of somebody else, put my name on it, you know? And, but Detective Rodriguez said, but he did not have a right heel. She knew about them faked x-rays. And remember, so Detective Rodriguez's uh, testimony doesn't match up with the ER doctor, nor does it match up with mine. Detective Rodriguez lied, and she lied about this heel bone, which means she knew about them faked x-rays. Next one. Also found a security camera picture of her leaned over my nightstand, and I believe that she was planting my stolen cell phone. Based on the timestamps, it looks like that Rosie and April Chandler waited on the other officers to leave my room before she planted my previously stolen phone. It had gone missing around the same time that my phone lines were cut, right before I was shot by surprise. This left me with no communications and forced me to crawl out. This is a security camera picture. Okay, I'm going to show you this. And remember, she, you know, they tried to disable the camera. They didn't know these pictures were being taken. There's the timestamp at 3.54 a.m., 129, and, you know, and so just six hours after I shot or whatever, this is April Chandler, and I have other pictures, to, be, and that's how I know it's her. I, I know from the clothes they're wearing, that's Rosa Rodriguez. Look at, she's leaned over my nightstand. My stolen cell phone was planted behind my nightstand. It wasn't there before I shot. And, and remember, my cell phone was stolen. My home phone line was cut. That's what forced me to crawl out. But also, <clears throat> my uh, the bedroom camera was terminated as well. Okay, so they were preparing in advance to murder me because when I was shot directly at an artery uh, from point blank range, uh, then I was supposed to bleed out and die without communications. Okay. So another related lie was when Rosa Rodriguez stated that I told her my phone wasn't charged. So I went outside and called for help. I crawled out because I had no communications. My cell phone disappeared, so I had my cordless phone in my pocket. But when I tried to call for help after being ambushed and shot, I found it was dead. They had cut the phone lines too. Also, at the same time, 8.08 p.m., my bedroom camera was terminated. They were preparing for my murder. So whoever uh, shot me at that group was preparing. This was premeditated. This was a planned murder. Once again, right from the police records. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Buddy advised... <clears throat> He makes sure all his doors and windows are locked before going to bed. I was locking up for the night and, and shot myself. Now, remember what the, what the uh, ER nurse documented was totally opposite. <clears throat> but the other part here, but he said his phone was not charged. I didn't say that. I mean, she made, <clears throat> she made that up. And that was an absolute lie, but he said his phone wasn't charged. No, I did not say that. And then I related at the same time my cell phone was stolen and my land phone line was cut. My bedroom security camera was terminated. Okay, and this is the log file from the security camera software, Yawcam. It terminated at 10, at 2008, 808. <clears throat> At, at 1042, I'm crawling out. So, so you can, so two hours in advance, this, this camera was terminated. I didn't terminate it. So, so they, so they disconnect, the, they killed the camera. They cut my home phone lines. They stole my phone. Remember, they have, they have underground access to this home, you know. Ricky Ronaldo said, I used to go in the tunnels under that home when I lived there. Remember? And this is one last, this is the last picture from that camera before, uh, uh, before later in the night when the secret police came in at three o'clock in the morning, they rebooted 
the, my computer and they unknowingly restarted the camera. I had this camera set to start on reboot. And so this is when it terminated. The log file showed it terminated at 8.08. At 8.07, there I am, and I got my shotgun. And you know why I got a shotgun? It's because I was under home invasion. I had burglar alarms going off over and over and over. You know, um, that's what was going on. I already been told by the police uh, they better not be called again for this stuff. That happened on, on December 20th when, uh, when Bush and, and, uh, that other officer was here. It's another story. Next one, the transcript from the protective order here uh, held on 12 18 shows that the, that the story Rod, Rosa Rodriguez contradicts what the ex-wife said concerning who called who. Rosie said that she called my ex-wife after I shot, but the ex-wife said that, that that wasn't what happened. It was my daughter that called her and told her, told her to call Rosie. This is perjury no matter how you look at it. Okay, this is the transcript from the uh, protective order hearing held in December 18, 2013. This is Detective Rodriguez's testimony, okay? She says that uh, that she called my ex-wife, her, her lifelong uh, childhood buddy and friend, okay? Did you call her on the cell phone? Yes, ma'am. This is the ex-wife testimony in the same court, okay, at the same time. She said, I was contacted by the by his daughter, actually, Jennifer Webb, and she requested that I call Rosie. Okay, so one of these people is lying, and, and that in court, under testimony, that's perjury. That's aggravated perjury. They didn't have their stories together between the ex-wife and, and Rosa Rodriguez, there's more proof of more lying, okay? And then here, uh, this is the lastly, Rosa's narrative on the police information report says she talked to my neighbor who believed that I was slashing their tires, but their cars were parked in front of my home and watched by security cameras. It was absurd. This was another lie, and that was the neighbor that had, sus had the suspected tunnel entrance in the backyard. You, I have a video on that called Tunnel Entrances. You also see where she called the mental health hospital and tried to personally have me committed, even though I'd been cleared by mental health at Midland Memorial Hospital. Interestingly, she was the person that closed my case. Wouldn't it be interesting if the same person that sneaked into my home and shot me by surprise also closed my case? Okay, and I'm going to show you this from the police report. Okay, so there's Detective Rodriguez. Here, there's the case number. Okay, and we already read that about foot wasn't um, amputated. But he signed the consent to search form. Remember, it was withheld held for five months, okay? I, I spoke with Buddy's neighbor, okay? Uh, to something about the sun next to his resident. In the morning, the cars were slashed. We moved the cars. No love. The tires were no longer slashed. And, and so keep in mind, this is the same. They were parked right where, right where the same video camera that caught Woodward and Naylor showing up right, right after I was shot, okay? And they believed it was Buddy. Then now keep in mind, these are the people that had the suspected tunnel entrance in the backyard. I got a feeling that they're friends with Rosa Rodriguez. And then lastly, Rosa Rodriguez, I contacted Allegiant Specialty Hospital to evaluate and commit Buddy Webb. Can you imagine that? I'm the, I'm the, I'm the survivor of a premeditated for-profit capital murder attempt that had been reporting repeated burglaries to my house, reporting crime to law enforcement, and, uh, and, and then she closes the case, and that's on June 26, 12, Rosa Rodriguez. Now, it's it, very interesting if the same person that sneaked into my home or under my home, better said, uh, pointed, you know, cut my phone lines, pointed a gun at me, pulled the trigger, and then also cl closed the case. I mean, this is a money-making police department right here. Y'all need to share this. This is, this is important to you, to your family. This is dangerous. Any police doing this is a danger to you, your family, and, 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 and everybody else. God bless you, Buddy Webb.